is on and we are on too time to party oh yes i already see 1.6 on the chat uh, that's nice i've never heard of that though great to be with you guys <laughs> kogito wrote it's sasko time oh wow it sounds almost like uh, it's morbin time <laughs> I'm not sure if I like that or not, but hey, this is how it sounds. Mm. Rebel Pop slaps! 
great to be here uh, and I'm really happy uh, guys that you're here with me uh, we have so many people already you guys are the best yo papa papa looking good on my new monitor mm, el bugato so you have a new monitor that's nice <laughs> Some uh, uh, some proper uh, you know RTX 3090 with it. Great shirt, uh, thank you, Pablo. So this is actually a 20th anniversary Samurai edition. Um, you can see the logo at my back. It's actually the same one as I have here. 20th anniversary. Uh huh. Yep, on my mug. Damn. Uh, nice to have you, my dears. Um, uh, CX, CCCCXC. Road finally managed to buy Witcher 3. Now I own all of them and Cyberpunk and ready to do a marathon. Sounds proper. Uh, thank you so much, CX, CCCC. XC uh, to be here with us for being here with us and for playing the game and Kazuliski uh, it's nice that you are with us as well a uh, gray beard uh, cool can I get one well gray beard you can take a look on our gear shop and um, and they are there I bought it I didn't get it I bought it too so hey I'm a it's a the project fanboy you know I be, I buy all kinds of things that um, we release uh, in a shop so Danonic91 asks, hello, when next update? Well, Danonic, probably when it's done. You know, when we are ready for it, I would assume. Kyle Drotink, uh, good to have you with us. <laughs> Camille Cesaro, Voitas, Roma, Alpha Homes. I missed the streams on my holidays. How are the holidays, Roma, by the way? Uh, it's nice that you're with us. Thank you. I hope that you had a good time. Uh, Danonic, yeah, I mean, we will, we will talk about, you know, officially um, when the, when we are ready, you know, with the updates, my friend. Tomisław Apolloniusz Farel wrote Sasko time. Uh, no Tamu Road Hi Pavo, I won't be able to see the whole stream, but will enjoy what I can. Thank you so much, my friend, uh, for being here uh, here with us. Sadek79, great to have you. Magda, good to have you with us. Spinny, uh, nice that you're with us, Spinny. Uh, my friends, there's already a ton of us um, here. Um, let's go into some banger, because why not? Maybe we will uh, summon, uh, maybe we will summon, you know who. Uh, uh, when this uh, tune plays out. <laughs> Voitas wrote, update 1.6, I'm waiting. Voitas, I'm waiting too, my friend, believe me. Oh, hello, Machiavelli, good to have you with us uh, on the chat. Play some Samurai songs too. I mean, you mean like me, myself? <laughs> It might be difficult. Rocker Girlfriend, hello, hello. Uh, good to have you with us. Uh, Rocker Girlfriend, by the way, I saw the uh, commission. I saw the commission you did with the, uh, with the, um, uh, you know, with the Samurai members. Holy shit, so good. Uh, I retweeted it uh, when I saw it. I also tagged uh, two other people. Uh, Michał Zbrzeźniak, uh, cinematic designer, and uh, David Cordero, uh, our senior animator. Uh, to see it because like we've been working together uh, with uh, Michał Brzeźniak and David Cordero uh, uh, on that quest, especially on the scene when they're all together. So I thought, I thought that, um, you know, I thought that uh, it's, it's really awesome. <laughs> Sapphire wrote, your Samurai tea looks cool. We'll have to see how it fits. Oh, okay. Yes, because uh, finally, uh, soon Sapphire is going to visit me, uh, which I'm really looking forward to. Um, 
Vlad uh, Godnik says hi from Russia. When will the long-awaited update come out? Well, I mean, Vlad, uh, probably when when we are ready to talk about it, uh, my friend. I'm not going to, you know, as you can probably, as you can probably guess, I'm not going to randomly speak about the update uh, here, my friend. But you know, it's uh, cooking, cooking. Sapphire wrote, me too, can't wait. Uh, yeah, I can't wait too. Praying for Meredith and Lizzy Weezy. Lizzy DLC, uh, Yukinia89. Okay, Yukinia, if, uh, if you say so. Um, I'm glad that you're waiting for an update. This is Soul's favorite soundtrack, uh, Machiavelli said. Oh, you're commenting the Adam Smashers uh, tune? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much, Rocker Girlfriend, uh, for the uh, sub. Uh, you're the best. Um, uh, Ka Katronks Brr. Katronks Brr said hi. Hi, Katronks Brr. Nice to have you with us um, for the first time on the chat. Um, must be in a slow cooker, a G Apollo wrote. Yes, it's in a pretty, pretty slow cooker. <laughs> that's, that's the idea, basically. That's the idea. Um. So, uh, Mac uh, Eldar, Mac Elder One, uh, or if I if I'm reading your uh, nickname right, Mac Elder One says hello. I wanted to say a huge thank you, and all of the team CDPR. I love you for such a great game like Cyberpunk 2077. I have only one question. I don't need any details. Just tell me. In the future, we'll see what happens to V after the endings. I mean, my friend, as you can imagine, I cannot speak about something as huge as what you're asking for. Uh, but um, what I can say, uh, with whatever comes for, comes next, we'll try not to disappoint you. You know, uh, my dears. <laughs> Pablo asks, Pavo, what is the door behind in the background? Pablo, this is just a fake door. It's just a, it's just a sticker. Th this door is just a sticker on the wall. It's not an actual... It's not an actual door. It's just a fake, you know? No, it's it's a bathroom. It's a bathroom. <laughs> but hey. Uh -huh. In Cyberpunk 2077, what makes you a criminal? I don't know. Getting cock, from what I've heard. Uh, anyway, okay. Um, so, my dears, um, I wanted to... Uh, this soundtrack, depressing but beautiful. Yes, uh, exactly, um, exactly, it, it is, it is, uh, that's Hanako Yorinobu, getting C-, uh, 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 Pinky Julian wrote, oh really, <clears throat> 2023 is getting closer and closer each day, so excited for Cyberpunk expansion, Cyber Caldas wrote, uh, thank you so much. <laughs> Have you found the clown yet? Spinny says. Oh, you mean like Ozop? Uh, well, I mean we did the we did the story with uh, we did the uh, quest with Ozop some time ago, and um, we have but we have not played yet the um, the game with the tournament the the fist fight tournament yet. So I guess we are about to meet him, um, unless you are of course uh, you know uh, unless you are of course you know asking about the clown in my bathroom. Uh, no, I didn't find any clowns in my bathroom uh, at least last time I checked. Pablo, if this door is fake, it should be displayed as closed. Uh, Pablo wrote, absolutely, Pablo. Very well said. However, it's not. It's not. It's not. Uh, like I will definitely remember about this uh, suggestion when I will be designing my uh, my you know my place. I think it is an excellent idea, Pablo, uh, to have lots of doors like this, you know, in the flat. Uh, Drelos asked, "Did you play Stray?" I didn't yet. Uh, I actually. I actually, uh, uh, I'm actually planning to check it, but honestly, not yet. I'm still, I'm still like in a way with like Zelda, and I don't know. I played like, I don't know, 80, 100 hours probably at this point um, of this game, so really a lot. Uh, but I'm, I'm estimating that maybe I'm like in the middle or something, maybe slightly after the middle um, of Zelda at this point, and still playing the. This girl is you. So those are two pro two games I have right now on my um, schedule, sorry to say. Samurai6613, hey Chums, hello, uh, great to have you. So this is the heist. 
Do you play Elden Ring? Oh wow, I will, I'm planning to. I'm planning to, but Voitas, I'm, I'm feeling that uh, Elden Ring is going to uh, is going to beat my ass. I think it's going to beat my ass. Ex Cacolos, uh, Ex Cacolos, interesting cat jamming. My friends, so I think this is a perfect moment for us to uh, greet our moderators and reds that are with us right now. And as I mentioned uh, already, we have uh, Sapphire uh, with us. Uh, Sapphire is my dear girlfriend and she is modding for us every week. Thank you so much, Sapphire. We have also Kogito. Uh, Kogito, I hope that you're uh, enjoying your uh, time off and your rest. And I hope that your son is doing amazing in hockey. Um, uh, uh, from what I remember, uh, from what we remember, Kogito's son is a goalie. Um, so uh, big cheers for him. And aside of that, we have uh, one of our dear Reds. Uh, we have um, um, a small Sandayu, Kira. Kira is our in-game uh, photographer. Uh, we are actually pretty much talking daily uh, with Kira about stuff you know, for uh, the game. Thank you so much, Kira, for uh, being with us uh, on the chat. Uh, and if anyone else shows up, I will try to call them out. Uh, if they're, of course, are here officially, because there are, as always, people lurking, uh, but I'm not going to mention them until they won't make themselves uh, present for all of us. So, my tubes. Did you watch the Witcher 3 anniversary stream? Uh, yes, this is 20th anniversary shirt. Yes, as I mentioned, it has 20th anniversary logo. This logo at the back. Um, yes, did you watch? Did you watch the stream? You did? Yes, I hope so. Uh, it was lovely to hear from Philip. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Philip was really talking in a really cool way um, about the game. Actually, you know, right now, uh, because Philip's spoken about one of the bigger, how to say it, okay, should I call it a secret? Like things that haven't been found still from The Witcher 3. Um, we were actually talking so much with Philip about that one, like that one thing, because it's like pretty important. <laughs> and like nobody found it yet. And it's like literally fucking seven years of the game passed. Yeah, Ixlet Alice was looking for it. Yeah, I mean, Ixlet Alex is, is really on the track, kinda. I mean, we are not trying to say too much, but yeah, I, I think like without any more, uh, without any help, um, uh, it wouldn't even happen. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, you guys are too subtle. I mean, well, that's the whole point, uh, Asha. That's the, uh, that's the whole point. <laughs> So, um, and that's the, so that is the, so that is the, uh, that's the Witcher 3, uh, thing. Like, I think there were, like, cool things, like, if you follow It's Letalis on Twitter or on YouTube, you can actually see, because he was, uh, trying to track it, uh, the thing that Philip was talking about. Um, I'm not going to say anything more, uh, about it. I'm curious what you guys think. Um, uh, Pavel Sasquo, uh, thank you, Valfo. That's exactly uh, how I'm how I'm called. Uh, that's that's literally the name I'm using when nobody's watching. Um, Machiavelli said, "Best The Witcher 3 content creator in you on YouTube." I mean, you know, I'm definitely thinking uh, Machiavelli that he would be pleased uh, to hear it. Uh, so that is the so that is chooms the anniversary stream for the witcher 3 so next anniversary stream is coming and we already uh said on the previous stream that it is going to be hearts of stone and i'm not going to say who is going to be there uh, but i am pretty certain you are going to love it um so uh i hope that i hope that uh, i'm going to i'm going to see you all uh, on the chat uh, when the uh, when the next stream uh, will be up because uh, it's uh, a, I think it's going to be awesome. Aroma asks if it's going to be me. Um, well, no spoilers, but I, I guess I can say no. Uh, it's not going to be me. And you know, guys, like uh, I am here pretty much every week. You know, talking uh, b bullshit. Uh, so you know, you guys have enough of me, and I think it's. Uh, it's about time to put some spotlight to another team members 
and I'm glad that it's happening, uh, that we have like various rats and so on uh, on those streams. Uh, so uh, you are going to be able to uh, see yet another person. I think it's going to be fucking cool. Anyway, um, but yes, uh, and I'm going to be there. I, I can't wait, actually. Uh, Drelov said, "Show us the memes." Well, I mean, the the uh, the memes is uh, we are we are not doing the memes uh, nowadays uh, just because we wanted to focus more about playing the game. The game. Roma said, "Oh well, I mean Roma, you won't be disappointed. I tell you that." Uh, Pablo said, "Before the premiere, did you expect people to like Nibbles so much?" I mean, you know, Pablo, I I sort of hoped for it. But I was more like, when I'm doing stuff for the game, in most cases, I'm doing things that I like. <laughs> you know what I mean? So like, when I'm building something, I'm doing it the way I feel is good, based on my taste and uh, uh, cultural experience with books, movies, and games. Um, and, and my own feel of the aesthetic. Um, so I didn't really put much attention. I thought that people will probably like the fact that it's um, it's something to like you know unlock and cover and so on. Uh, it's also something that like helps out with the loneliness in this game, you know, because like one of the very prevalent things in cyberpunk is this loneliness uh, that you have. And like in The Witcher, you even had like more friends, I would say, you know, uh, with you. As a player, you had more, more people, in a way, around you. Uh, you had the situations when they were all meeting, you know. Uh, some of them were, like, really old friends of you. And in Cyberpunk, you were just much more lonely, you know. So, in a way, I felt that doing something that will help out with this loneliness uh, would be nice. But in the same time, I didn't want it to, like, overtake the game, you know, because... Uh, I didn't want to change the, the direction of the game, you know what I mean? So, um, yes, so that was important. Uh, Guadalus, thank you so much, my friend, for gifting the sub to Xkakulus. Xkakulus, uh, you just got a sub. My friend, use the, them those uh, icons on the chat, my friend. Uh, there were actually other people that subbed, but I have completely missed it. Uh, Yukia89 and uh, Lord Turnip96. <laughs> By the way, Lord Turnip, did you did you ever play uh, Animal Crossing, Lord Turnip? Um, uh, I uh, thank you so much, Lord Turnip and Yukia, uh, for uh, the subs for the primes, uh, my friend. Uh, Yane Kuipi uh, L1. So, Yannick Kupi, uh, Q, Yannick, Yannick Pell. God damn it, it took me some time to decipher this. Yannick Pell wrote, do you know how is Witcher 4? I do. Uh, science fiction pass. <laughs> Yannick, obviously I don't. Uh, obviously I do. Obviously I do, but uh, what can I tell you, my friend? What are you expecting me to say? What are you expecting me to say? Besides, like, as, as we mentioned in the past, we didn't announce the game called Witcher 4. We didn't announce New Witcher Saga, my friends. Let's call it properly. Anyway, chums. Um, do people at the studio get to choose if they want to work on Cyberpunk or Witcher? I imagine that your bosses want you on Witcher because of your experience with Witcher 2 and Witcher 3. Science fiction person said. I mean, science fiction person, this is much more complicated. This is much more complicated, my friend, because, like, the people that you're getting for your projects, it's usually a combination of experience, but also, uh, you know, their own knowledge and uh, simply the, not even the experience, but simply skill level, uh, but also charisma, you know, how well they can lead and manage uh, people in the departments. Um, so it is a bit more complicated, I would say. Uh, also, like, different projects have different needs, you know, um, uh, so this is very important, like, just a, I don't know, out, uh, like, extremely simple example, which is, like, cars, you know, you have cars in Cyberpunk, and, uh, last time I checked, I didn't see any of, any cars in, uh, in The Witcher, we have carts 
you know, <laughs> The Witcher, but not Cars itself. So, as you can imagine, it is a bit more complicated, you know. Uh, it actually is connected. There's many, many different factors that you have to take into account, you know, skill set of a given person, um, their experience, you know, their uh, level, you would say, you know, where they are and so on. So, lots of different factors to consider. And... Uh, in, in most cases, it is done in a way that we are having a conversation with devs, you know, um, what, they, what are their needs, what do they would prefer and so on. However, as a studio, you normally like in a game industry, you normally have some kind of an idea where you're moving like the majority of your focus. Um, so it, it's very, it's, it's very much uh, a, a, a combination of many of those different factors. Dunsta 512 wrote, is which one remake possible? I mean, Dunsta, no comment about it, my friend. Uh, no comments about future content uh, whatsoever, because it will be, uh, even when I uh, blink, it will be a, um, uh, there will be YouTube videos about it and Reddit threads. So uh, forgive me, my friend, no comment about that topic. Um, uh, holy shit, so many questions already on the chat. Um, uh, Yukiya wrote always welcome. Uh, you, Miles, and Cyberpunk team inspired me to study game development. Oh, that's awesome! That's awesome, Yukiya. I'm, I'm glad. I hope then to see you, you know, in the uh, in the gaming industry at some point. Connor, great to have you, my friend. So Connor, my friends, um, is uh, is our destruction artist. Uh, Connor is from time to time here on the chat with us. Uh, wrote back to re to the reality from short vacation. Uh, great to have you uh, with us, uh, Connor. Connor has a diamond icon because it's a member of a red team. My chums. Yeah, the destruction guy, exactly. Asha wrote. Um, Sata said, hi chums, nice to be back in the audience. Hello Sata, uh, great to have you with us, uh, my friend. Kogito gifted the sub to Grindera. Uh, thank you so much, Kogito. Wow, okay, we have... We have Muzzy on the chat. So Muzzy, my friends, uh, is our lead art QA, you know? So uh, Muzzy is actually a very experienced dev uh, with us since long time at this point. I think it was like beginnings of Witcher 3. Uh, I believe so. So quite some time uh, at this point already got to the uh, lead position in his crew, uh, actually leading a, a, pretty, a pretty big team. Um, in the studio, middle of Witcher 3. I'm nine years old in the company. I see, I see, Muzzy. Yeah, I, I, I was always, yeah, I was somewhere locating you somewhere like at the, at the, at the, at the early stages of Witcher 3. Uh, did you see John Wick 4? <laughs> did you see John Wick 4 trailer? I did, Voitas. I did, I did, I did. Yes, yes. Keanu is as sharp as always uh, there, you know. I'm, I'm really curious about the movie. I have to say I'm quite, I, I quite enjoyed uh, all three uh, John Wick uh, movies and uh, I'm actually really curious uh, how it all turned out. And I think the release is like November, wasn't it? Because I, I think there was a date already, you know. Um, I think there was already a date, uh, March 2023. Oh, I see, I see. Okay, I'm, um, I was... Uh, I was not sure. Um, that's okay. Thank you, Pavel. Uh, Voitas, don't worry, man. Uh, Voitas wrote, I'm sorry for my English. Dude, like, your English is totally fine. Um, you are, y your English is perfect. Uh, CQB02RMSE8RI says, Another Witcher 3 question. Was Khvitr, the albino boy, a source? Hence the ritual in Druid's Groove um, in two, 204 Thralls. Oh, I see we have a, fo uh, we have a fellow data miner um, here. Um, CQB02R uh, MSE8BRI. Um, uh, the answer, I mean, I'm pretty sure the answer is yes, if I'm not uh, mistaken here. At least, um, at least this is how my... Um, uh, you know, elephant memory tells me. Keanu's dialogue is amazing in the trailer. Um, Rabbit Encounters wrote. Uh, mm, I don't remember what the hell he says in that trailer, but I'm, I'm, I'm glad you liked it, you know. 
Have you guys checked the Neo Gas thread Cyberpunk better than Witcher 3? Um, no, Asha. I actually didn't see that thread. Um, Hawk in GTI wrote, Pavel, what are your favorite movies? Uh, first of all, uh, glad to have you, Hawk, on the chat. What are my favorite movies? Oh, God. I mean, there's, like, so many good movies uh, that I've seen in my life. But, like, like I think 12 Angry Men would be, like, one um, at the... Would be probably at the top. Um, so, like, 12 Angry Men. Hmm. Uh, by the way, I, I don't know if you guys know uh, 12 Angry Men. It's uh, I'm talking about the version from 1957. Uh, you know, the classic. Uh, the classic. Uh... <laughs> yeah, 12 Angry Men is like one of my favorite movies, uh, to be honest. But outside of that, I mean, I really like fucking classics, you know, honestly. Um... I really like classics and like, I'm worried that like majority... Uh, <laughs> Mazi wrote Windows Movie Maker, best movie. <laughs> okay, Mazi, if you say so. <laughs> if you say so, Mazi. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, I, I I love classics, you know. So, like, just just even, like, some old black and white movies. Kamil Atakan wrote 12 Angry Men would be my top five. Yeah. I mean, come on. Come on, Oops, absolutely. Um, did you work on the entire Skellige questline for Witcher 3? Science fiction person asks. I mean, the thing is, like, the entire Skellige questline was made by Kubarokos. It was designed by Kubarokos and me, I think, mostly. Like, I actually designed or co designed many of Skellige quests. Um, uh, for the main storyline for The Witcher 3. So, uh, on the implementation level, when, when we already had the story and so on, uh, there was also Do Dennis uh, Zotebir, my dear friend, who is right now working in uh, Guerrilla Games. So, um, Dennis implemented at the time uh, the um, Berserkers. Uh, story. That was something I designed and then Dennis took over and implemented. Uh, and Kuba, Kuba, Kuba Rokos designed the uh, Ice Giant uh, section and that's uh, his design and implementation, uh, of course. Um, yeah, and then the Race for the Crown, that is, oh, that's also Dennis, that's also based uh, partially at least on my design. So I was involved at least, you know, I, I didn't, I, I cannot say that, I, you know, I, I worked on it completely myself because that's absolutely not true. There's a lot of uh, talented people um, that worked on it, you know. But uh, definitely, at least from the beginning, I was uh, in a way uh, somewhat involved into it. Um... Okay, my dears, uh, dear, uh, there was one thing, so I wanted to tell you about the Hearts of Stone stream I did, I talked to you about anniversary stream, there was something else I wanted to mention, but holy shit, I forgot. Hmm. I don't remember, actually, what I want, what else I wanted to tell you. <laughs> Camille says, outsider no more, no, Camille, you don't recognize it? This is not outsider no more. Come on, Camille. <laughs> I mean, you already started playing. I cannot just randomly interrupt it. Can I? Can I? <laughs> Pablo, 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 you're like, pa Pablo, you're like a masturbator. You know about it. Like, like, you know, it, it's a... a, a, a Okay, I didn't want to say that. Uh, you're like a master in like setting up the bait. You know what I mean? Pablo wrote, Pavo, if you were doing which one remake, would you throw away the infamous sex cards? Uh, Pablo, I have uh, I have no comments about this. You know, definitely um, I haven't been like a huge fucking fan of them. So, but uh, but you know, I'm not commenting uh, any which one <laughs> remake questions. I'm sorry, my friend. <laughs> um. <laughs> Ma Ma Matt 16 wrote family friendly masturbator. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> Stop it. It was an accident. It was an accident. Um... <laughs> oh, God. 
I see that uh, everyone heard it, uh, even though I didn't mean it. Even though I didn't mean it. Give me what I want, uh, Camille wrote. Well, I mean, Camille, at some point, at some point, at some point, where probably it will play. At some point. Um, okay, uh, my dears, I don't think I had anything to add. If I will remember, uh, I'll tell you, uh, my friends. But that is... Oh, yes! I know what I wanted to say. God damn it. I remember now. Okay. <laughs> Asha's well okay. Patch 1.2 will be glorious. Uh, oh, I already forgot what I wanted to say. God damn it. No, I'm joking. Okay, anyway, I remember <laughs> what I wanted to say. Um, um, a rocker girlfriend. Hey, this is a random message with no underlying intention or what, whatever. But thanks for showcasing the community's VP. I had friends featured and it means a lot to them. Oh, no worries, uh, rocker girlfriend. I'm glad, I'm glad. I'm glad. Um... Uh, <laughs> used used posted oh exactly <laughs> pablo unzip yes exactly um anyway so uh, uh i wanted to i wanted my friends uh to mention something so like there is the community meetup right coming up and i hope that a lot of you is coming and that we are going to see each other i'm not like 100 percent sure if i'm going to be there or not uh there is a chance i am uh and i would love to uh, I, I cannot say it definitely because, you know, lots of different things happened, but uh, happen. I would love to be there. Um, but my tombs, I am hoping that I'm going to see you there. You know, in the studio, in person. I was supposed to have surgery on Friday. That's why I didn't apply for it. Rock or girlfriend wrote. God damn it. Okay, I get it. I'm sorry, I hope that surgery will be fine. Asha's Welke wrote, uh, People don't go free Polish food buffet, enough said. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I don't think that there is anything wrong about, uh, about Polish food. Anyway, I have no idea if there will be any buffet, but if you say so, uh, I really honestly um, have no idea. Uh, Greybeard said, Has the date for Cyberpunk and uh, 20th anniversary stream been announced yet? Well, Greybeard, I don't think it has been announced because, like, the way it works is, like, we have a stream and then that stream, at the end, normally the person who is leading the stream, so either um, Alicia or Amelia, I think at least so far, or uh, pa um, Pavel Buja, I think three of them so far has been, have been streaming and having guests, they normally mention, right? They say, like, hey, on the next stream, there's going to be this and that person, uh, sorry, next stream is going to be about that and that game, not about that and that person, P people will always keep as a surprise. So, um, uh, so according to my knowledge, then nothing was announced uh, yet, but I would just imagine it will happen at some point, you know, as, you know, when we progress through the game, there's still, you know, um, the next one is Hearts of Stone, right? Okay, um, Arctodus, Arctodus said, I just want to say I love Cyberpunk, it is my top three favorite games ever. Arctodus said, hey, my friend, look, uh, wait for the expansion and we'll see, you know, what happens to the top two. Um, maybe, maybe there is a chance, maybe there is a chance, you know. Um, anyway, uh, thank you so much, Arctodus, for, for playing the game uh, and for your comment. Uh, Chaim Frach, um, I quoted Eminem on the chat. That's interesting. I didn't know that Eminem said that. But uh, anyway, um, you know, uh, who knows? Uh, Grindera is asking if the Polish food is pierogi. Uh, my chums have no idea. Um, uh, um, Edwin Stahl, have you thought about creating a real 1.1 1 uh, 1 to 1 replica of a car from Cyberpunk? I mean, according to my knowledge, it was created, wasn't it? Uh, there was this... Um, uh, there was there was at some point in US a contest to won to win the um, uh, it was basically a Ford Mustang base with the um, how to say it uh, car shape of Quadrats uh, Type 66 wasn't it or I'm just making it up I think it was and it was like in 2021 was that or in 2020 was that uh, that contest uh, so there was a replica. 
Every employee could ride it, example, once a year. I think uh, that about Quadratite 66 Javelina driving around the streets of Warsaw would make an impressive impression. I mean, definitely impressive impression, Edo Install, uh, my friend. Very cool uh, idea, I think a bit costly, uh, but uh, I think it was done at least in some form. It would be so awesome to get Porsche from Cyberpunk, uh, my dear Sapphire wrote. Well, well... <laughs> Yeah, uh, I guess it would be nice. Uh, that's uh, definitely true. Um, Reverin says, Hi, Pavel, really respect the work you and the, the project team did on Cyberpunk. I really enjoyed the game, even though the release did not got, uh, go as expected. But I'm looking forward for uh, to what you bring to the game in the future with DLC and expansion story. I'm excited. Uh, have a nice evening. Greetings from Slovakia. Ahoy. Uh, ahoy, Raverin. Uh, thank you so much, my friend, for being with us and for this kind uh, comment. I'm really glad to hear that you're looking for an expansion. I am actually looking forward to it as well. Um, my dears, I can't fucking wait, uh, if I'm uh, being honest. Gutek asks if patch 1.6 is going to be bigger than 1.5. Well, Gutek, considering I'm not talking about any future content, I cannot do any comparison for you, my friend, but thank you for your comment. And nice that you are with us. <laughs> Giapollo wrote, Pave will get it for you at Christmas. I, I think Sapphire, a uh, good uh, Giapollo meant, you know, that I'm getting you that Porsche. <laughs> right? Uh, sure, absolutely. Um, uh, maybe like they, they, I saw that there's already, that there's this like small version you can you can get, you know, like this really tiny one. Um, actually, uh, I think I think it's available somewhere. <laughs> um, anyway, um, so, um, uh, X Mnemonic asks, uh, you know how you added car chases into game recently? Is it possible to add more random events like that? X Mnemonic says, so uh, you're referring to basically the events that are happening sometimes in the city. Um, it's a bunch of them. Uh, we have, uh, added, um, them in the patch and, uh, that is as much as I can say, my friend. I'm not commenting any future content. If it would be possible to add more events uh, or not like this, as soon as, um, as soon as I will be able to talk about it, I will. Believe me, nothing will fucking stop me uh, to talk about it. Okay. Uh, fishing DLC with Master Baiter achievement confirmed. 3DM um, a man wrote. Uh, uh, very interesting. Um, very interesting, my friend. Okay, my chums, I think, I think that we are, uh, we need to, we need to switch to the game. How are you feeling about this? Because, like, I want to play, I want to play. Um, it's a pleasure talking to you, but it's always awesome if we can, if we can play the game uh, together. Um... <laughs> Uh, Sapphire Road uh, can't drive, uh, drive Hot Wheels. I mean, you know, better that than nothing, hey? So, yeah. Um, Lorky Stream, great to, uh, great to uh, have you be with us. Uh, Rogler Boyd asks, Pavo, have you played with the Flying Cars mod? No, I didn't. Uh, I didn't, my friend. Uh, however, I know that the people from the studio did. We also watched a bunch of different videos um, with it. I'm really... Um, how do you say it? I'm proud of the mothers uh, that they are doing this. I'm really glad, you know. Um, it's actually, it's actually an interesting topic, you know, like because like when we were designing uh, Cyberpunk and like actually just making sure that the architecture of the game is done in a way that it will be as easy to mod as possible. Yeah, I I remember it was uh, Philip Weber uh, because he used to be a mother uh, as well. Uh, our acting, our acting campaign director for The Witcher. Um, it was Ero Varendi, our quest designer, also former modder. Um, and me, we were having conversations with uh, our uh, code team to just make sure to design, you know, uh, um, cyberpunk from architectural standpoint in a way that will be as easy as possible to mod. That's why it's actually so easy for uh, the modders to do all of those things, you know. Um, 
because simply, you know, there are some games uh, that are done in a way that modding is really, really difficult. And I'm here not talking about any legal, you know, issues and so on. With that, I'm actually talking about architecture of the game, how it's built inside. And uh, both Witcher and Cyberpunk are, are built in a way that, um, with, with the modding in mind, uh, you know, so it will be actually pretty easy. And by easy, I mean in like quotation marks, you know, because it still requires some work. Um, but it, it it could have been done in a way that is close to impossible, you know, uh, because there are games done like this. Uh, that's why there are some games that you're never uh, you're never seeing mods, you know, for them, or, or like close to never, um, or like the modding community is very small, you know, uh, for them. And when we were designing things for cyberpunk that was the intention you know to really make it in a way that um to really make it in a way that uh that it will be easy you know uh for the modders to actually build cool shit with it and i'm really happy uh, that it's happening i'm really happy it's happening uh, science fiction person says around a year ago you were asked if you're satisfied with a discord around cyberpunk and it said that you felt like problems have overwhelmed the discourse what's your opinion now uh oh actually really interesting question science fiction person it's much 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 cleaner now because of the fact that you know many more many more patches came out also i think like a lot of people who just you know hated the game just to do it um just just to hate it uh already did it and moved on um so uh the, the discourse is actually much more healthy i would say at least from what i'm seeing like and i'm talking about conversations that i'm observing on twitter and reddit and forums um, and some youtube comments but it's just like so vast that i'm not able to keep up with everything uh, but definitely the places where usually like these conversations are the most heated um which is um reddit and then but reddit is usually a bit more civil than uh, twitter um in those places uh, those conversations are actually looking much more um civil i would say and people are actually really talking about what the game is um which which i'm really glad to uh to see elusi wrote um elusi art wrote of it's good to see consideration of modding i'm not the modder myself but still it's nice uh thank you elusi art um okay oh god i'm just not keeping up with the chat i'm sorry chums uh, i'm so fucking behind Oh god, I'm so behind. Seriously, I'm just reading as quickly as I can. Uh, Connor wrote, I broke The Witcher 3 couple of times with mods. Yeah, that's the thing. It's just like, it's always such a danger because like, when you make your game actually easy to mod, very often it is like this, that people actually, with mods, break their own game. Um, and like we had numerous times situations when like people were writing to us or to customer support saying like hey you know the game's broken and I'm here talking about both Witcher and Cyberpunk and we were like checking their save games and stuff and we were like dude or girl or, or anyone else you have literally modded your game and you broke it for yourself and you're like sending it to us that it's broken and it's always like it's always the frustrating part, I would say, uh, because like as a dev, you feel bad, you know, because that there's something wrong happening. Uh, because in a way, you want to allow the modding as much as you can, so people actually can have just fun, you know, with your game uh, and build cool shit. But unfortunately, they will unintentionally break the game and then um, message you. Uh, I mean, like send it to to the studio and say, hey, shit is broken here and there. You know what's going on. And you're like, well, I mean, you're literally using the modded version that you broke for yourself. So what we are supposed to do, you know, that's the thing. Uh, because like in general, just just by definition, you know, modding, especially modding huge parts, uh, you know, of the game or like substantial makes it just a bit more dangerous, you know, uh, for you. And those with you who are probably playing with mods a lot, you will see that the game just slowly, slowly becomes more and more unstable more you tinker with it you know uh, but again it's natural it's natural it's nothing like you know extraordinary and so on it always happens you know it's just uh it's just i would say a risk uh that, that we have to take you know to just like make sure that that people can actually uh mod 
Uh, Machiavelli said, I have a long email messages with CDPR support. That's nice. Machiavelli, you're friends then, you know, that's good. You know, it's good to have friends. Um, it's good to have friends, you know, they definitely recognize you. <laughs> Grindr as it didn't install, not working, please fix. Yeah, <laughs> that pretty much, that's pretty much how it feels. Reddit is a sp spooky dude, uh, Pinky Julian. Right? By the way, Pinky, I w I checked. I seen your series with like um, your V. Uh, I think your V is called Vincent, if I'm not wrong. Vincent and um, Pinky and uh, sorry, not Pinky <laughs> and Mitch. And it's so good. Like the Panzer Boy series that you did, so good, man. So good. I loved it. Seriously, like the progression and so on. Like the fact that you actually did this thing that, um, you know, how, how Mitch is slowly losing hair. I was like, okay, that is, that is like, you know, seriously, some on point, on point modding. Um, some on point modding, really awesome. <laughs> Machiavelli said, I'm a moderate person. I criticize the game while I'm constantly praising it more healthy. Oh uh, yeah, exactly. Machiavelli. I mean, I, I think like it, it is the most healthy when you basically call it for what it is, right? Like that is always the most healthy approach. Um, and again, like it, it, it sometimes happens, you know, that like as a, as a person, you, you know, it, it's like difficult. Uh, sorry, I have some technical uh, issues here um, on the side. Um, it, it, sometimes it's actually quite difficult, I would say, you know, to... Um, uh, to be able to, you know, disconnect in a way your emotions, I would say, from actual observation, uh, let's call it, and, and really, like, see uh, the reality rather than be, you know, mistaken um, in, in some ways. So um, it's, a, it's a pretty difficult skill, you know, to really, like, see through everything. Um, Machiavelli said they're really helpful and care about the players. Oh, you're talking about uh, our technical support. Uh, absolutely, Machiavelli. Yeah, they are. Uh, I mean, I you know I know all of them, uh, and it's just so, it's just you know it's just so awesome to see, um, you know, like just um, a lot of time, you know, so much time they spend actually really helping people, um, making sure that you know they can like, um, I would say like help as much as they can. Uh, you know, with ever, anyone having issues and so on. Uh, Carlos said the first rule of modding use a modding tool like Vortex or MO2. My friend, you probably know much more about it uh, than me, so uh, I'm. Uh, uh, but you, you're probably right. Um, CX, C, 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 X, C wrote, my life is falling apart. Can you fix it? I mean, my friend, I really hope that your life is re not really falling apart and you're, and you're, you're joking. Uh, I can fix only very little uh, myself, unfortunately, you know, and if that's the case, you know, just reach out for professional help, my friend. Uh, X Memonic, um... Uh, uh, um, uh, Xmemonic said, can anyone here in the chat give me an idea why my GOG Galaxy is always failing? Uh, cloud Sync on Cyberpunk. Uh, Xmemonic, well, I mean, I definitely cannot. Um, I definitely cannot uh, do that. Um, uh, but, uh, like, I, I can say that my GOG Galaxy is completely fine is actually not failing uh, to sync like i think you know our customer support would be a great um place to reach out oh so it's valentine um sorry that's that's the name of pinky's v sorry valentine yeah <laughs> no worries no worries uh, pinky julian you did amazing uh, I, actually those shots are so fucking good <laughs> pinky julian oh, yeah the man is balding yeah absolutely he is jesus this is literally turning into like me being interviewed by like 400 people um, instead of me playing a game. Mm. Uh, oh God, I'm scrolling through all the comments. Um, science fiction person asks any tips on how to improve on writing dialogue? 
well, I mean, I'm not a writer myself, you know, specifically. I do a lot of writing, but not the writing dialogue, you know. I, I write screenplays and stuff. Um, I mean, my friend, the best way I can I can give you to, to uh, improve on writing dialogue, I mean, well, there, there's many, many, many different things, but uh, this one tip that I can give you... Hmm. Well, I mean, every, every writer will always tell you that one of the best things you can do to actually improve writing is to write. Um, second thing, you know, with the dialogue is the dialogues actually have this thing that they need to sound well when they are read, uh, when they are read aloud, you know. So you can actually read them loud to yourself. Um, the next thing is, like, please make sure that when you're writing dialogues, do not try to actually simulate the actual speech, like actual way how people speak. Uh, because that's not the way. Um, you are trying to actually create an illusion of people conversing, you know, rather than write literally what is said. It, it's, a, it's a completely different um, thing. And I think, like, for most of the time when people have trouble with writing dialogue is because, like, they do not have interesting content to write about, you know? So, like, when I read the scene and so on, you can feel that that scene is actually really it, there's no structure there's no substance i would say there's no conflict there's nothing really happening between the characters so like one of the best things i remember um tomek marhevka our associate story director who's an amazing uh, writer and writes great dialogue tomek marhevka said that you always you should as a writer try to actually design the flow of a dramaturgy inside that scene you know, make sure that you actually have this unique interaction between characters that one of them wants something that is contradictory to another one. And they are sort of in the way of each other. And throughout that dialogue, that things are getting revealed. That's important thing. And either that you reveal something about the character or rev you reveal something about them as people you know so there is um so the character the people but sometimes simply the intrigues of the plot uh, itself so make sure that you design that flow of that scene first and you have it in mind let's say it's a talk in in which you know let, let's say at the end it leads to uh one and another you know fighting with the knives you know uh, on the street in a rainy evening and as a as a designer as a um, as a writer, you can have that scene. So always just think it through, you know, what actually is the, the, the core of, uh, of that scene? What is, the ac uh, what is the actual flow of that scene? Oh God, you guys are so, so quick with typing. Uh, Jake Joyce said, uh, can you ask someone in your company to add more GOG games to NVIDIA GeForce Now, please? I mean, <laughs> as, you can, as you can imagine, this is like the absolute, like, it has nothing to do with me, right? Like, I never, I do not work on that specific um, branch of our company, right? That's something that, I guess, business development and, and maybe GOG crew is taking care of, uh, my friends, so... I wouldn't be, I, I wouldn't even know with whom to talk to um, to be honest like I think if you if you're looking forward to it just write to GOG or to Nvidia or to GeForce now simply and just ask them I think that might be actually much more uh, um, effective way than asking me my friend okay uh, my chums I think. I think, my dears, uh, that we are uh, we need to uh, switch to the game. I already have the game running, um, so I am now. I will now just um, disable the illegal stuff, and then um, and then load the game. Okay, I already have it. Yes, the game is loaded. And I think you can see the game. We are in the uh, uh, Aldecados camp. <laughs> illegal stream? No, not illegal stream, my chums. Unfortunately, yes, I know about the music. Uh, don't worry, I was waiting for it to end, which actually happened just now. And now we can uh, go back and enable back the sound. Yes, and now we are here. I think that you're hearing the game. Uh, I can actually 
see you guys uh, already um, I can hear I can see on a twitch studio that you guys hear the music which is good sorry sneezing um, I didn't want to sneeze, sneeze to the camera uh, this uh, sneeze to the mic uh, let me actually really quickly um, check if there's oh god i missed so many comments uh i'm sorry chums i'm like so behind uh, but i really want to start playing the game mm. uh walker tv says i hope cdpr continues to work on cyberpunk for some time and add more content features it's such a strong ip it'd be a waste to let it go walker tv set uh thank you so much walker uh, because from your comment, I I can read that you you like the game, uh, which is which is awesome. Um, Pavel, did you add the engine missing the key quest to patch 1.5? I know you added secrets within the iguana. Is this one worse? I think it might be an Easter egg. Uh, Inola Fire uh, said. Well, I mean, what do you think? Is it an Easter egg or not? Um, and yes, it was actually. It's one of many things that has been added in patch 1.5 and you guys still didn't find it uh probably i suspect that majority of people in the chat don't know what we are even talking about um uh sar martin says any lead to missed by players quests we're around to stir dick after them maybe well i mean <laughs> i mean uh sar martin i'm not sure if you guys missed the whole quests maybe like we had situations multiple times when people here uh, on the chat uh, wrote that like complete quests that they missed um, so who knows maybe uh, conf585 uh, says Pavel how is the new expansion coming along well I mean my friend uh, no comment about the expansion um Hella Comfy says, any new content coming for this game? One of the biggest games I have ever played, but have run out of things uh, to do Hella Comfy. Well, I mean, Hella Comfy, uh, uh, again, the same the same comment as always, like, my friend, no, I, I cannot, I cannot speak about future content, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, my friend. When, you know, we, we know that you guys want more. Uh, that's kind of, you can probably always say it, that you guys want more, but, you know, like I really I know you really want more. So um we'll get there. We'll get there. We'll get there. Um uh Camille, why why would go to Camille, uh, to uh, to Panam though? Um because like I believe that we have talked to Panam and there was nothing new to actually talk to her about. Uh good to see you Scorpion. Um Who were your biggest mentors in CDPR? Hmm. I actually don't really think that I ever had a mentor in uh, in um, CDPR, you know? Like, I started at the times... Oh, hello, buddy. I started at the times when, uh, you know, we were, like, much smaller company. And at the time, uh, you know, like, we didn't really have it. Oh, yeah, I remember how I fucking horribly parked my car here. Okay, I'm I probably won't be able to leave. God damn it. I need to um, run for a bit uh i didn't really have a mentor at the time the, the thing was that um you know we were like much smaller company so in a way as a as a person you we were like learning for everyone a bit and there was actually numerous people that really um had a huge impact on me as a designer and uh people that uh really like taught me a lot and i think like probably first person that i would ever mention is uh, Martin Blaha. Martin Blaha is our story uh, director, and I think, hands down, that Martin is the best storyteller I have ever met in my life, and I have ever worked. Um, and I think there's such a big gap between Martin and everyone else. This guy is absolutely like genius level. Um, genius level storyteller like hands down like he is absolutely amazing uh just for a record for those who don't know like marcin blaha is with the company since 
Uh, I think I think he started middle of Witch One, um, wrote a lot of dialogues and a lot of story for all the Witcher games. Uh, Cyberpunk uh, wrote dialogues for, for instance, uh, Sinner Man. Uh, fantastic guy, uh, amazing to work with. Uh, really had a huge impact on me um, as a designer. Another person that we brought up uh, is is Konrad Tomaszkiewicz. Uh, so our uh, our former um, director of The Witcher 3. I learned a lot of things about quest design from Konrad. Konrad was, as some of you may know, um, Konrad was a uh, QA at the beginning. Then he was a game de game game designer or gameplay designer um, in general, and then he became a, a quest designer and lead of the quest team, and eventually he became a um, game director. Um, I learned a lot uh, from Konrad, especially like matters regarding leadership um, and, and direction, you know, things like this. Uh, so those are the things that I really, uh, really stayed with me, uh, I would say, and I'm really thankful for that. Another person is Mateusz Tomaszkiewicz, you know, a former quest lead and uh, quest director. Um, Mati, um, Mati was also an incredibly talented designer. Uh, he was actually one of those guys who was very well rounded as a designer. Um, I always, it was always a great pleasure to work with him. Uh, he not only had the skill of actually being able to listen very well, you know, uh, actually listen to your reasoning, understand what you are actually trying to achieve uh, as a designer and advise you, you know, it was so good uh, actually to, to work with uh, Mateusz. So, um, I think that's the that's another person. Um, and you know, there's like bunch of other people that I could mention. You know, uh, regarding that regarding that uh, that topics. You know, f people like um, people people like Pavel Milnichuk. You know, our art director. This guy is incredible. Honestly, this guy is absolutely incredible. Like, um, I. I am still learning uh, the aspect of actually art direction, you know, and uh, and you know how actually to how actually to direct the game on artistic side well. And Pavel's so good in that shit. Like he is able, he is currently directing both character art, concept art, um, uh, locations, you know, so enviro um, environments. Uh, basically, such a such a uh, talented guy. Um, Pavel Milinchuk is the guy. Do, do you guys remember maybe the uh, uh, session for Tris Marigold for Playboy? <laughs> for The Witcher 2? So actual that session for Playboy for The Witcher 2, that was the session that Pavel did. You know, it's actually his, um, it's actually his uh, work, you know. So um, that is, uh, he is just so, he's just so good, you know. Uh, sorry guys, I was just for a bit oh, answering the question, uh, uh, this, this long question, rather than looking at the chat, so I'm a bit uh, behind again. Um, uh, did you do uh, Did you do any voice line for enemies? Dot, I heard your voice when someone cursed me mid-fight. <laughs> no, I actually didn't. However, my friend, I did some dying man in The Witcher 3, you know? So in The Witcher 3, if, if, if when dudes are dying, that's me, basically. Um, uh, Ice Giant in The Witcher 3, uh, the trolls uh, in The Witcher 3, um, then um, uh, Carrie and River during sex scenes, that's me as well. Um, yes, as you can see, uh, like my portfolio is uh, growing significantly. Uh, I also did uh, sex sounds uh, that you can hear behind the doors in... Um, no tell motel so yeah uh, as you can see like uh, i i clearly uh, clearly peaked uh, in my career of, uh, as a voice actor but uh i i didn't do any voice acting for uh the um for the actual like combat chats and and so on and voice sets <laughs> Uh, Pavel, you're gonna makes me makes me blush. Galaxy up on road. Hey, I mean, why? <laughs> what is happening? What is happening there? I'm not sure. I'm not sure.
family friendly stream TM I mean absolutely like we are keeping the uh, we are keeping the um, how do you call it um, tradition what is this fucking mad GPS doing let me actually look at it oh it's at the top and that's why I fucking lost its shit okay well but at the top oh it's at the top of 06 mega building okay I think I'm, I'm, I, I think I know how to get there hopefully No, because this one will get me up. So I need to get to the mega building, I believe. Do I? Have you played Cruelty Squad? I'm so I'm sorry, my friend, I didn't. I have no idea what Cruelty Squad is. Uh, to be completely frank with you, uh, I think it's no, it's not this one. Or am I? Or um, that's not what I wanted to do. Okay, it, uh, it is actually in the front of me. Uh, oh, so that was not this. So that's the na another one. Okay, so I should be able... What is happening in this city? Like, literal people are shooting each other there. Okay. Let's, uh, let's park here at the Milk Boulevard. Oh, talk to me, Muammar. Got a serious gig, which means I'll be needing a serious mark. Oh, that's exactly me. To hop to Sixth Street turf and graft a virus onto their tech. Counting on you, champ. Oh, and one last thing. There's this tech, Lucius Thorin. I wouldn't mind if he got a piece of lead to the skull. You dig? Good. Specs attached. Damn. Okay, one more. Uh, let me check it, my chums. There, god damn it. Agent Saboteur. This is David Martinez Mega Building, and the Lafia uh, wrote. Oh, you, uh, if you say so, my friend. Mm -hmm. uh, Pavo, can I ask why you have so many references to 2014 Sacrum Profanum Festival specifically? I have counted almost a dozen obscure references that specific years. Uh, festival actually mocking box I don't know uh, to be completely honest like that was not something um, that's not something that I have uh, that that's not something that I have uh, done or worked on so my friend I have no idea my dears uh, we have stealth spell on the chat stealth spell that's the spina our quest designer uh, as I mentioned before in the past uh, the spina is working on the new witcher stuff for you, my dears. Uh, so, uh, great to have you uh, with us, Despina. Uh, yeah, the Milk Boulevard. I, I don't know. Despina's asking what boulevard. Well, it, it says the Milk Boulevard. Um, I'm not actually really, um, not actually really sh uh, sure what was the angle, but you know, uh, it seems it's a Milk Boulevard. <laughs> Uh, Guilty the Fat says, well, you may need a serious merc for a serious job, but I have a very serious question for you, Muammar. Do you know the Muffin Man? Uh, I, I don't know if he knows the Muffin Man, but I hope he knows the Merc Man, because uh, that's me. Uh, I have the Merc Man's car, and I am the, uh, I am the Vengeance. Um... Um, Grilovana Kielbasa, really long question. Pavel, uh, Cyberpunk Red Concepts showed the world of Cyberpunk of a variety of futuristic looking technologies and equipment. For example, checkpoints placed in the airspace for control AV's traffic. I'm absolutely charmed by Night City's architecture, mechs, robot style in the Maelstrom Gang, but I think Night City lacks some sort of a hard science fiction fit technology. What do you think, Pavel? Very cool question. Uh, we talked about it actually slightly um, in the chat that for us Cyberpunk was actually like from architectural and design standpoint really about like striking a good balance between um, the futuristic and retro and for us at least and again this is more of a stylistic choice than really anything else uh, Cyberpunk is more about retro futurism rather than about 
you know, hard science fiction. And, you know, looking at the roots of cyberpunk, this is exactly how it used to be. So that's why in cyberpunk you have so many cables and like, you know, actually pretty bricky objects, you know, like telephones, I, I mean like cell phones being like pretty big, you know, same goes for like tablets and all other uh, devices like this, like laptops and so on. They look more bricky and rigid. Uh, they're actually anything uh, that we have nowadays. And that is obviously a conscious choice. Um, so, Girlevana uh, Kiyobasa, we, we tried uh, actually strike this, I would say, balance, you know, between going futuristic and um, still keeping the, the feeling of a, of a retro city. Um, also because like it is unique you know it is very unique for the cyberpunk 2077 uh, to go this direction i am not actually aware of any other piece of the medium that was doing it the way we did it um i mean maybe some of them were like close you know uh when you look at the judge dread you know johnny mnemonic uh, akira um the visuals there were kind of retro and kind of futuristic you know so that's that's the reason when there's not this much like hard science fiction here um in in cyberpunk 2077 uh however you know who knows what future brings like like uh you know uh, when when working on uh on the um uh on anything that will you know come out in the future you may see you know uh move forward with that but definitely i think like i would really like you know when we'll keep this i would say uniqueness of this ip and i'm here speaking about actually uh precisely about like uh, 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 grasping this our cyberpunk as as this retro futurism because i feel it's actually much more unique and special than just going hard science fiction uh, there's like so many medium so much so much media even games you know that they're just hard science fiction so like like i don't think cyberpunk should be yet another hard science fiction um Yes, okay. Um, <laughs> Stealth Spell wrote, hello everyone, sorry for not greeting you individually today. I messed up but had to close and reopen the tab. Um, no worries, Stealth Spell, we are really happy that you're with us. Um, uh, um, Enola, Enola Fire. God, God damn it, your guys' nicknames are difficult. Uh, Alona Fire said 2077 is unique, can tell that from day one. Uh, I'm glad. I mean, that was definitely the um, objective, you know, the angle. Let me guys actually read this so that I can start playing and then um, keep on uh, checking uh, your questions. Uh, Agent Saboteur. In fact, Six Street computer with a virus. Okay. And location is Six Street hideout at Milk Boulevard. I'm not wrong. It's, it's, it's uh, Milk Boulevard. Those boys and girls from Six Street think they got wicked smarts that they can jump a military transport in my hood without me knowing about it. They think that they can crack corporal weapons and tip the balance of power in the city to their favor. It's time they got a root awakening. Okay. I'll snap you the location of the 6th Street hideout and the door's code. Job simple. Find a way in. Look for the comp they use to jailbreak corpotech. Upload the virus I will supply to you and voila, their fancy new weapon melts into a sparkly new slack heap. That's a very fancy word. One more thing, if you happen to find a Lucius Thorin, do me a favor and make his ass disappear, will you? God damn it, it's actually crazy that he asks specifically for his ass to disappear? Very interesting, uh, very... They, they must have they must have had a very interesting uh, history, those two. Thornton Zvtaki came up with the gong plan, which makes him a real thorn in my ass. Pun intended. Stay safe and have fun. Okay. Um, give him a flat, fa flat ass. Yeah, exactly. That's uh, exactly what I'm thinking. Uh, that's exactly what I'm thinking. Um... I suggest to neutralize Sixth Street gongs outside at Mega Billing so they don't attack you on your way out. Glassolalia said, Glassolalia, you are speaking my language. What the fuck's happening here? Oh, I have... That's not what I wanted. Wow. 
Wow, okay, they, they, it literally exploded. Okay, I shot this one in the ass. What is going on there? Glass of Lilia, those are the tombs that you've been uh, talking about? Holy shit, I missed. I'm so boosted. I'm so boosted, seriously. What the hell? Give me all that money from this homeless person that was here. Uh, apparently someone was moving in. Okay. Cool. This tomb used to have a head, but doesn't have any more. Shot in the balls. You are asking for it, my friend. Haha, <laughs> look how I'm looking for a cover, my friends. You know, I learned. I shot him in that beanie. I suspect that was, um, I, I suspect that was a, um, a, a bulletproof beanie, but, you know, it didn't work that well. I didn't work that well. No, not, the, not these. Okay, I mean, uh, if you say so, if you say so. <laughs> Um, the beanie was an implant for a second brain, Vanilla Avaro. <laughs> okay, if you say so. <laughs> oh wow, he fucking lost the head. Okay, well, I mean, anyway, we, we have actually a much harder task to do because we are, we are supposed to make this guy's ass disappear. So, that's a very interesting toilet. Toilets, toilets, Vitex. Okay. Okay, Vitex. It's actually so funny uh, because, like, uh, those of you who are actually, uh, those of you who are actually Polish, uh, will probably, will probably um, see it. You know, during uh, um, you know communist times in Poland, we had like lo and you know just after it, like there was also this like I would say specific um, fashion choice in the naming of the companies that like a lot of companies uh, picked the name you know of their company that was like the most obvious way to name it. So for instance, like the company that was making concrete. In Polish, concrete is beton, right? So it was called betonex, you know, and you had all of those like, or for instance, like screws, you know, screws in Polish are śruby, you know, so you had śrubtex, you know, and all kinds of companies like this, you know, when they had this X at the end. So here you have Vitex, you know, toilets by Vitex. So I guess um, we have some Vitek who is the, um, the owner of the company. Oh, that's interesting. Very specific uh, spot. Holy shit. Okay. There's just so much stuff here. Ooh, the uh, uh, rooftop. Did I manage to reach it? No, I didn't. I'm boosted. Then Vitex, now Vitek. <laughs> that's a good point. That's a good pun, uh, my friend. Um, Salta said, can you elaborate a bit more on the background of the confession booths? Are uh, they just decoration or a nice nod to the commercialization of religion in the cyberpunk world? Or do they serve some other story quest related purpose? Um, Salta, so, uh, I mean, you are pretty much, uh, you are pretty much on point with your claim. Uh, one thing is, it's of course, you know, us telling the story, the background story of the commercialization of religion in, in general, that's pretty much happening nowadays as well uh, you know we, you don't probably have to really look uh, much further to actually see it uh, my friend so that's one thing second thing is you know like we actually pay a lot of attention uh, in our games to the lore and um, by lore here I mean like actually you know how, how certain aspects are treated um, in the game and what people think um, about certain aspects. And one of them is, of course, religion. And it's an important aspect of people's lives. Uh, so 
because we were touching um, in the um, this storyline Voodoo Boys, you know, and, and Voodoo as as it is, you know, and uh, you know the lore of the Voodoo Boys that is actually really cool and interesting. We wanted to touch uh, that aspect as well, uh, you know. That's why. Uh, okay, I think this is those are the dudes that Glass Lalia was talking about. Uh, so that's why we have decided to add it. Uh, uh, the other aspect being like we also had a pretty interesting idea, you know, with those uh, booths. It was uh, our game director, uh, Adam Badowski, who had the idea of that booth. Um, and I remember, holy shit, police legal activity. Oh, but right, because I was pointing my gun towards those poor fellas. Holy, holy shit, he has a smart gun. I have shot him in a hat. Cool, uh, cool, 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 my friend. Good talk, good talk. I am a little menace. I love those mega blocks, by the way. They are so fucking iconic and interesting. Like, as the locations, I mean. Oh. It's actually so cool that uh, even though, like, they are architecturally similar, you know, the environment art team built it in a way... Oh, I grabbed some sushi. Um, environment art team actually paid attention and built them, like, uniquely. So you can see that there are similarities, but there are also differences. And it's, uh, it's actually striking a pretty interesting balance, you know, uh, between those two. Okay, let's go to the mega building. I guess we're going to apartments. Level. Uh, Ixirel, Ixirel said Shemanko. Uh, Shemanko Ixirel, for those who don't know, Shemanko in Polish means hello. Uh, I, I guess. <laughs> um, Connor said one of the best things in red games are Easter eggs that only Poles are going to understand. <laughs> yeah, of course. Okay, Chooms. Oh. When was the last? Time to uh, remove his head. Wow. Okay, that's. Okay, there. That was difficult. Like uh, I was literally fucking one shot almost. Holy shit! Uh, Jesus Christ, my Chooms. Uh, we need to put the carry pans on. Where is the game music? Well, I mean, the game music is uh, played depending on the uh, well, our decision that our internal um, music engine, in this case it's WYS, uh, decides on. So, like, sometimes it decides, sometimes it decides not to play the combat music, and sometimes it does. It actually, it actually really depends. Um, the reason for that being that otherwise, otherwise it felt um, very predictable, I would say. Yeah, I mean, predictable is one thing, but uh, other thing is, it's just like listening to that music constantly is a, um, at, at some point you as a, as a player, you had enough, you know? So I, I remember like at some point we had a conversation with Marcin Przybułowicz, our amazing um, composer, main composer, and uh, that was Marcin's decision, you know, to basically sometimes just play it on the ambient, and ambient being like the world, right? Like the things you hear right now, just, you know, city at the back, you know, here, you know, a bit of um, a bit of the mega block and so on. Those are the things that uh, that you, we, we call or consider an ambience. Is it confirmed that there is Cyberpunk stream this Wednesday or some other week? I mean, Uranium Bullet, uh, so as I mentioned, uh, this week there is going to be a uh, Hearts of Stone stream. It was already announced um, at the end of the Witcher 3 stream, you know? So Hearts of Stone are coming uh, next time and I hope that you guys are going to be there. Because like, uh, I think like people who prepare those streams, like, you know, just put a lot of effort into it uh, and actually like, um, 
I'm listening with pleasure, you know, uh, regarding like what is being discussed there. Fuck! Oh god damn it! Motherfuckers! For the union! For the union? Come on, give me your head! You bastard. God damn it! They were like exactly the opposite. Fuck, worse than back in 71. <laughs> worse than back in 71? Really? I mean, I guess in a way worse, you know, because he's dead. So, uh, you can probably say so. Oh, I can because I'm in combat? Uh, am I in combat right now? Okay, I guess I am. Um, oh, a pretty nice, uh, nice, uh, place for homeless people. Ooh, it, it all got red. Oh, I leveled up. That is so nice. Ooh, one tribute point. Oof, let's go. We have 20 reflexes, my chums. Um, anyway, um, I don't think we had anything here and everything from handguns, so I am going to go to buddy and go athletics. Uh, we were actually going over those athletics one. Mm, mitigation by carrying the body. That is what we need. Okay. Just to be a bit more tanky, um, hopefully I'll survive. Uh, oh, sh holy shit, so many comments, my friends, I'm so behind. Pavel about the music in CP, um, from where Marching has those sick guys who create tracks for radio stations, that was from any kind of contest. Um, X Xrel, I, I, well, I mean, to be completely honest, I have no idea. Um, Marcin is, um, Marcin and Piotr Adamczyk and Paul, Paul Leonard, uh, they've been, like, cooperating by so many different, with so many different, like, artists and so on you know, who composed music for all those stations. So, um, I suspect that it's simply Marcin's, you know, uh, his... Fucking coward! Pussy! It's basically his, you know, uh, feeling of, um, how to say it? Uh... It was basically Martin's decision, Martin's call to which artists, you know, with with whom to work and so on. Um, so those are, in most cases, his choices, you know. But I have no idea from where he gave them, uh, got them from. Like, I guess, you know, it was a lot of... Uh... Where the heck is that camera that is, like, targeting me? I suspect there was just, you know, a lot of internal discussions and so on before we found all of those artists because like, as you can tell, it's like so many of them in all the, all the different styles and such. I need, to be, I need to be careful because like, they are so fucking powerful. Holy shit. Oh, that was nice. Okay, uh, the, because this is basically a tech rifle, it shoots through the walls. So I was able to pierce through this bastard. Oh, that's cool. Okay, I'm not going to... Holy moly! Ugh. Oh god! Okay, chums, I seriously, there is a legendary item. Okay, thanks, Kami. 250! Let's go! You know, for 500. Uh, <laughs> Jesus Christ. I did it, uh, but you know, like, I, I don't die that often, right, guys? I mean, seriously, I don't. Okay, I need to put my fucking carry pants on. Or I know you're in here. Fuck. 
actually this one is a pretty clever one because I can shoot those <laughs> those fire fire containers and shit um Just fucking explosives, you know? Hey, you are basically witnessing a, a, a birth of a new Sasko, you know? Uh, and it's a birth of the Sasko who uses gameplay features. Okay. Are, aren't you guys proud of me? Okay, there's this bitch. Ooh, I can force open this. Okay, that's cool. Who the hell has seen me? Okay, time to uh, switch. Where is... Where is that mud dog? For the union! Okay. Okay, Chum, if you... The hell? Okay, guys, I'm using the cover. Look at me. I'm using the cover. Good. Me uh, can save that is so sad. Play. Next week, Play. how about CSGO stream? Oh, yes, absolutely. Play. I'm just um, uh, uh, next next time. Um, what? You can sneak through the building. I mean, now. Glossolalia. That doesn't sound like something I want to do. <laughs> That's Come okay. On. Give me a clear Get up! Whoa! No, 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 no. No, 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 I'm behind the cover. I'm behind the cover! I'm behind the cover, Chooms! Chooms, I'm behind the cover. What is happening? Your, your OP strategy to, like... I can shoot there. Your OP strategy to use, um... Uh... Say hello to my little friend, bitch! I mean, how little is your friend, though? Get up! Keep pushing! Okay, I think he's dead. No, he's still there. Jesus Christ. Okay. Time to, um... Time to go in. Flick! Suicide! Go! That's not exactly what I meant. Jesus Christ, those dudes. You motherfucker. Okay, I'm, I'm liking this gun, to be completely honest with you. Um, she's got us by the balls. Oh, she's got us by the balls? Oh, that's, that's pretty accurate, my friend. Oh, shit. Oh, shit, they're circulating me. Holy fuck. Say hello to my little... Jesus Christ, I already said hello. Okay, Chums, uh, we are we are doing this. I'm going through it. You know, everything's fine. Widowmaker is the best? Uh, that is no Widowmaker. That's just some poor Achilles, unfortunately. But, you know, I, I'm not sure. Do I have Widowmaker? I think I did, but I'm not... 100% sure. Give me a here. Where are you? Swapping mags. Give me a Okay. Good. <laughs> there's like, there's like literally fucking three of them. They look like Olsen's gang, you know? Okay, slowly, uh, you know, going through those uh, bastards. Okay, my dears. That's okay. Uh, we basically ended the misery of this netrunner. 
Okay, my chums, I think it's time to check that computer there. Holy hell. Come on out. There's so many enemies here. Well, I mean, in a way, I'm getting inside the inside the location of uh, 6th Street, so that kind of makes fucking sense that there's a lot of them here. Bye. You bad person. There is someone there. Hmm. No, I was just a TV. Oh, holy hell. Okay, he's above me, uh, or she. Uh, that's good. Um, this place has a great layout. Yeah, absolutely agree. Like, that's just... Uh, level design, like, I think, like, one of the biggest uh, differences, you know, be between Cyberpunk and Witcher is that that level design in this game is so much better um, than anything that we had in The Witcher, you know? I uh, uh, totally... I didn't totally see it, you know? Oh, I, I disassembled that, Camille said? Oh, really? I disassembled with Umaker? Oh, God damn it, I'm so boosted. Uh, science fiction person, hi Pavel, just a minor criticism observation. I like the quest design of Cyberpunk on the whole lot more than Witcher 3. However, in my opinion, the gigs aren't as good as the Witcher contracts in Witcher 3. And I think the reason of this is because the contracts have huge amounts of enemy, enemy variety, which allows for unique experiences. Cyberpunk obviously does not have that. Yeah, science fiction person, uh, uh, we, we pretty much know that, you know, my friend. There's actually lots to be done, um, you know, but we are quite aware of this um, and... Um, Hopefully, you know, moving forward, we'll be able to do it better. You know, uh, I think we, we took a lot of, uh, how do you say it? Um, we took a lot of conclusions, uh, you know, from this, from, from, the way, from the way we have constructed the open world. Um, uh, and the Lafayette wrote a mega building where all floors are accessible would be Nova. I mean, yeah, just imagine fucking the, you know, how heavy it would be for performance. Just the, you know having all this fucking 60 something floors uh, explorable uh kyle drotting road yeah i agree that some of the gigs could have uh, had more detail or dialogue and some of the characters in side quests could have become more involved in the main story yeah absolutely oh god uh they identified the body i took quite too long to uh deal with that and they're coming to me He's fucking somewhere above me, uh, but okay, that's fine. Um, I wanted to check where where is that where is that PC here? Canceling our services, all foods delivery rights, my tubes. Shraf 2K said, "If you had told me three years ago that Cyberpunk will be underrated in 2022." I would have called you a lying sack uh, of cow turds. Well, out. here you go. Uh, here you go, Shraf 2K. That's the reality. Uh, Hypogriff in Cyberpunk 2077 confirmed in expansion. Conf uh, wrote, uh, Conf uh, 585. I have no idea what you're talking about. Dear Ryder Kent. Due to heightened gang activity in your neighborhood, All Foods Delivery is canceling its services to your area. You may collect your goods at any of our stores. Any subsequent orders made from your current address will not be accepted. In the future, please consider changing your place of residence. We wish you a pleasant weekend. AFD team. I know you're in here. <laughs> Cool, thanks, dude. Uh, and I'm a winner. I know that. That's fine. Okay, uh, no more, no more emails uh, here. Ha! I managed to save the game. Cool. Give me this uncommon fucking components that I was worth. Um, okay. Um, what is happening here? A layout of this place is awesome. Um, I really like it. So varied. Okay. Anyway, I'm trying. I'll, I'll try to. Is that lap to boost it? No, I, I can actually use it. Oh, there's only a network here. Okay, it's like partially broken. God damn it! 
Something bad happened to this person. Oh, that was a recruit? God damn it. Jesus Christ, they they shouldn't uh, shouldn't be storing this many explosives next to them, by the way. It's it's like fucking dangerous, you know? It's like dangerous. Physius defense defense turret. In Introduction, safety protocols, component index, schematic. Dude! You are piss Wow, okay, he fucking found me or she. No, it was a dude. Okay. Fucking let's do it. Let's go. Let's go. Uh, I'm going to check it. I'm addicted to uh, checking in emails. Drones. Okay. I think this is... We must have read it before. Continue reading it? But what? I mean, I, I have read it, um, Kamil. How to, how to boot up a drone factor mode. Open the bottom cover. Disconnect the rod plug. Press the on. In the command prompt, wire restore fact. If you run into any issues, you know where to find me. Ah, yes. That was such a such a refreshing uh, encounter. Hello, Lucius. Yes, uh, you're just fucking uh, smoking at this point. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> L for love, burn it, exactly, yeah. Samaratin Road, mold, mold buildings accessible, Night City, that would be neat. Uh, I mean, of course, it would be neat, my friends. There is a guy that looks like he has a crocodile skin on the NCPD gig. He looks awesome. Oh, yes, and a life. Yeah, I know which one you're talking about, even. Um... Uh, science fiction person asks, are you curious about what Rebel Wolf Studio is working on? I mean, pff, well, you know, it's still years before anything comes up, uh, comes out from, from, from them because they, they just recently started. I mean, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm obviously curious, you know, I'm definitely going to check it out, uh, when it, when it, uh, comes out. So I'm, I'm curious really, you know, um, but again, it's just, yeah, it's, it's a long time before we probably see anything. Um, hey, Papa, why Casino at North Oak is not reachable? We saw a lot of artwork before the release. I'm actually not sure, to be honest. I remember this location, uh, Machiavelli, but uh, I mean, I have to admit, I haven't been uh, close to the process um, with this specific location and what is planned there, what was planned there. Uh, so I, I actually don't know, uh, to be honest with you. I remember it. I remember even the concept art that you're talking about, but I really don't uh, don't know. I even know which team has been working on it uh, right now, but I honestly don't know actually what plans they had. Oh, cool. We have this defender. Um, maybe let's, let's actually try it because I never, I think I never actually used that. Light machine gun. <laughs> oh god. I actually love it. I'll, I'll show you something, guys. So it has this, it has this Jinguji. It has this Jinguji skin on it. It has this Jinguji skin on it. It's so interesting. You know, Jinguji is like this, um... Uh, incredibly expensive, um, like, it's like Chinese Ar Armani, you can say, you know? It's this incredibly expensive uh, shop, you know, that does, like, products with high quality and so on, and you can get the, get the, you know, the gun with Jinguji skin. Uh, it's, it's, it's so cool, actually, uh, you know, because it makes so much sense uh, for this world when you have, you know, the, the, you know, the fashion designers and so on. Um, uh, you have like fashion designers and so on that make actually skins for guns, you know, in this world. Um, uh, Gucci Low, uh, Machiavelli said, yeah, I mean, Gucci or Armani, uh, that's, uh, but yeah, probably more of a, more Gucci than, than Armani. That's true. Virodyne says, finish the boys. Um, I like Soldier Boy win more than the deep. 
Oh, well, I mean, I, I, to be honest, I fucking hate the Deep as a character. He's just, like, so badly, like, I'm not a fan, seriously. Like, his story arc is just so disappointing, I don't know. Um, he's just purely, like, a comedic, comedic character in, in The Boys, and I'm just completely not a fan of it. Um, I didn't finish yet, though. Um, <laughs> X-Rail Road Deep Suck, yeah, uh, I, I, I guess. I guess we all know what you're referring to. Um, would you agree that detective mystery quests have uh, inherently low replayability value? Does the mystery effect being in the one-time thing, um, is it considered a problem in game design and if yes, uh, are there workarounds? Um, yeah, I mean, for, so first of all, it is definitely uh, the the problem being like you know if if you have the mystery and play it once again, there's no really not really much that you can do. Like normally, what you're what we are trying to do is like give you the replayability value, um, kind of the way we did in Cyberpunk, so that you can build your character differently and be a different person in a way, have a different build, different looks, like you know, different voice, um, you know, different uh, sexual partners. Um, different life path uh, so different past in a way uh, so that basically gives you the replayability value but in in cases of the mystery quests in most cases you kind of know uh, what happened um so uh we have actually tried to address it in a few different ways but i don't think that um at least that right now we have a good solution for that you know <laughs> um Jide Nokua said uh, the deep is there, so the rest does not look so bad. I mean, you know, to be honest, like, I'm a, I'm a huge fan of the boys. Like, I really like this series uh, overall. I really like this series overall. It's definitely, it, it, it has a fantastic vibe. Um, but the, uh, uh, but yeah, but the deep is like one of very few characters or, or things that they did in the, in the storyline that I was not a fan of. Um... Okay, uh, guys, let me progress, uh, please, and then I'll go back to your questions uh, some more. Cargo just left the factory on San Amo Street, sending you precise coordinates right after we received the rest of the payment. Bear in mind, the convoy is heavily guarded. Oh, is that the, is that the loot that Camille was talking about? Drones, Lucius, Lucius to Robin. Got the drones. The city's ours now. Lustrum, I appreciate your gusto and all, but aren't you taking this a little too far? Four military drones is sweet, but uh, we are not gonna win any wars. You don't get it, Rob. These drones are sold on the open market. They're internal death kits, so to speak. The code isn't coached, so it's using machine readable format. I can gap to the source code, which I'll make hacking. A stroll in a park. Now in English, this drone is a key that, if anything goes well, will open us the door to every drone of the Stabby Night City. Now do you get it? All of them. So no, I'm not taking this too far. When I'm done, the city will be ours. God damn it, Lucius. Uh, unfortunately, you know, it ended, that didn't end well, uh, end well for him. Uh, poor fella. Oh, that's the Thorthun's manual. We have that. Okay, Chums, uh, time to explore this place. They were talking about some, uh, close location. Um. Huh. Interesting, that's the turret. Okay, it's, I think I can go even higher, can I? Ooh. Cool. Nicely. That is awesome. I like this gun already. Hmm. Okay, I came from here. Hmm. 
Oh, the Max Tech way by Matthias Maddox. Yes, so here you can read a bit more about Max Tech. Uh, but I think we are going to move on. Uh, Jesus, that light here is sharp. Oh. So those are the chooms that I shot through that fucking hole. Cool. What a hell is target? Not anymore. Crafting specs. Um, uh, jump down. Yes, I'll jump down. Don't worry, my chums. I'm just checking the location. If there's anything interesting here, because I've seen some computers. Um, uh, just a network, nothing else. That is sad. Um, so here is the path down. Okay, I'll just check this here. Aha! I didn't see this yet. Uh, Woody757, uh, good to have you with us. My friend on the chat asks, if the first DLC sells well, do you think there are any chance of us uh, getting getting a second paid DLC? Uh, I mean, you mean expansion of DLC because the, the DLCs that we are guys giving you were for free. Um, my friend, I mean, unfortunately, I cannot comment on that, uh, my friend. And even if I would love to, I cannot. Uh, I'm sorry, my friend, because like, Whatever I say here will just in e instantaneously become the, um, will instantaneously become like a news, uh, so I'm sorry, my friend. Um, oh, look at that, I found some cool shit. That's nice, I'll check it in a moment. Um, okay then. Um, um Science fiction person says, when the cyberpunk teaser trailer came out, were the ideas for the plot and the main character being V solidified? I mean that you're talking about the trailer, which one, in 2012? Like that super early one? Because that one was, of course, you know, it's just like, at this time, we, like, we have we have been designing Witcher 3 and really like just very tiny small uh, group of people was just doing first conceptual work on cyberpunk so ops absolutely not um and that at that time um but it was like so a long time ago if you're asking about the last one the one with jackie then oh, of course yes that was like a year before the release or something so of course at this point everything was pretty much there uh, we were just, you know, improving the quality uh, of everything that, that you can see. Um, hey, Pavo, I have a question. Does the moving servers up and down while fighting Adam Smasher have some mystery? Should we investigate? Uh, Sepukov asks. I mean, Sepukov, I do prefer not to... Um, hmm... I mean, so I can I can say this because I don't want to mislead you. I do not know if they do have some misery or mi misery mystery or not because I what I was not working on it uh, myself. That's something that Ero Varendi, our quest designer from our team, has been working on. Um, so probably Ero would be a better person to ask this question. Um, uh, knowing life, there's a lot of things in Cyberpunk that have uh, uh, mysteries to it, you know, in some way. So who knows, maybe. Uh, you know, I am myself not aware of it. Uh, you are supposed to install malware on this one. Oh, I, am I? Okay. I forgot. I completely forgot. I completely forgot. Thank you, my ch my chum, to reminding me. Uh, Pitful Gamer. Uh, nice that you are with us in the chat. Asks, hey, Pavo, any change for FSR 2.0? Could be implemented in PS5, uh, Xbox X. My friend, I, I have honestly no knowledge about it. Uh, like, I am just, I am a narrative dude, you know. And uh, that is much too, um, how do you say it? Maybe not complex, but that is definitely not my speciality. So I, I wouldn't know, really, you know. Uh, I really wouldn't know. Um... So yeah, so unfortunately, I'm sorry, I can, I wouldn't be able to tell you. 
you know, like, uh, again, and that's the question about the future content, supposedly, so I, even if I would know, that I would, would know, I wouldn't be able to tell you, my friends, so yeah, I'm just a very fucking sad person, uh, so unfortunately, um, I cannot help, uh, Pitful Gamer, I'm sorry. Uh, Visual Chris says, man, I can't even think how hard it is to always tell people this is not a new stream. I mean, you know, Visual Chris, it's fine, you know. It's it's honestly like, because you know how I'm thinking about it? It's like, when people come over and ask about news and stuff, it means that they care, you know? It means that they give a shit about the game, you know? And that is really nice, you know? It's actually really nice to know that anyone fucking cares. Um... So, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm fine with just, you know... Oh! Oh, wow! That's like some interesting place to, that I can get to. I haven't been here. So that is... <laughs> so that is a person. Uh, I probably kind of shouldn't be shooting him because he is just a... He, I think he's just a civilian, isn't he? Yeah, he's just a civilian, so I'm not going to kill him. Yeah, God damn it, bro. You have such a crap apartment. Why be me? Confession of a brain dance addict? You read good books, bro. You read good books, uh, by the way. Um, oh, that's a, cool, that's a cool little fucking location. There's like so much cool shit uh, that is always hidden uh, in um, in the gigs. Like I honestly, personally think, Chooms, that there's so poten so much potential in this. I mean, I'm talking about right now about gigs specifically, uh, not Cyberpunk. Cyberpunk has has lots more potential, but I'm talking more here primarily about the um, um, about the about the gigs. By the way, the beep. Do you guys remember the beep? Uh, there is a question that uh, um, Stealth Spell wrote uh, that she hopes I will answer. Let me check it. Kulorin asks about quest design application tests. Do you have some insights uh, on the focus they should have when they are only 10 days? Well, I mean, um, I think like uh, I think that the Spina gave you already some hints. Uh, but my friend, like I, I always tell it to everyone, really, like who is. Um, you know, trying to do any tests for our studio, and uh, I always say, you know, like that uh, we should be. <laughs> I always say that we should, you should be really focusing on um, only certain specific things that you decided to pick uh, as a designer. The, the tests are normally designed in a way that you cannot do everything. So the the choice of what you are actually going to pick is a really important one, you know, uh, where you are going to actually invest um, your uh, time in. There are a few more things to get, Camille. Oh, sorry, man, I already left. But I think, like, I, I honestly already, um, I think, went through this location. Yes, an example, gigs that build on car chases, etc. Machiavelli Road, sure. <laughs> Okay, really. Thank you, Rivia Wolf Edits, for uh, the Prime, uh, my friend. Uh, I really appreciate it. My chum. Muammar, talk to me! Profesh as ever, V. Sixers will think twice before sliding their gunk asses anywhere near my turf again. And that thing with Lucia Thoran? <laughs> Cherry on top. Contract closed. <laughs> okay, I mean, I think that uh, I think that Muammar is like warming up to me, you know. I mean, I I did already like so many fucking gigs for him that I guess he is. But uh... <laughs> Kogito wrote beep beep motherfucker. Yeah, I mean, that's not the beep that I was referring to, but yes, uh, but that that too. Oh, Shraft K asks about FF zero six B five. I mean, my friend, my friend. Uh, no, no comment, as you can imagine. Uh, Visual Chris, my thing, thank you so much for the Prime. Uh, uh, I really appreciate it. Um, 
uh, FX77 i77X. In the past, Mateusz Tomaszkiewicz was talking about one of this, his Psycho Quest designers making some insane quest with a peller that had a romantic relationship with a goat. Do you by any chase know he was talking about? He couldn't stop laughing. Um, no. No, I never heard of that. Yes, well, so... Uh, as you can... So, I will say this. I will say this. Uh, do you remember? So, so, so the storyline... I oh, Sorry, I, I, I used the wrong button. The storyline of the Gooslar and his goat. Yes, that's the one that I did. It's a part for me of the Bloody Baron storyline uh, and a whole Velen area uh, that I was working on at the time. Um, but I'm not saying anything because, like, I don't know what actually um, what actually Matt meant. I am f I feel that maybe he was referring to the moment when you have the. Um, when you have but that's not the case i don't think so but maybe it is oh uh, maybe he was referring to the situation when um um maybe he was referring to the situation uh when um the uh sorry when you have a romance with tris and yen and then you have the scene when they are together and you wake up and then there's the goat isn't it i think so and that was uh nicolas Kolm. Nico did this quest, uh, quest line. <laughs> okay, FF77E77X wrote, I was kidding and exaggerating a bit. I knew it was you making that quest, lol. Okay, thanks, bro. Um, cool. Um, can you acquire Quadra Vitek, please? Uh, Machiavelli said, I will take, uh, take a look in a moment. Um... What is your favorite district in Night City? Voitas asks. Ah, oh, I think it's Kabuki. I think it's Kabuki. Such a fucking, such a fucking great atmosphere in that location. I don't know. Like, I also love Norfolk's. Also because like that is the one where where I worked probably the most. Kinda. Can I say it? I guess so. Um, that I worked the most there, uh, or spent my spent the most of my time because of Carrie, um, in Norfolk's. So I really like that one too. I don't know, that would be probably my call. Um, so like Kabuki and and then, uh, yeah, oh, small, uh, small Sandayu Kira wrote Kabuki is the best one, I agree. Yeah, it's just like, um, uh, that, that's that's one that, that I like, really. Uh, Pablo asks about any hint for FF06B5. Uh, Pablo, no. <laughs> oh, uh, Stealthsper wrote Charter Hill for life. Uh, I mean, if you say so, if you say so. Um... Science fiction person said, wonder who was it truly? <laughs> uh, Conf585, as a goat appreciator, I would very much enjoy such a quest, okay? My friends, I think we are stepping in a fucking dangerous territory at this point. It's a family-friendly stream. And uh, this is, um, this sounds, starts to be, um, this, this starts to be uh, a, a bit uncomfortable. Uh, anyway, um... Oh, Kamil Road, you missed a lot, including one more location. I'm sorry, Kamil. I am just a boomer. Uh, you know, you need to forgive me. Um, triple 16, a trippy 16, uh, asks how much, how much, how many hours do you have in the game? I mean, my friend, I have passed, surpassed like 181 at the beginning of this stream. Uh, so I think we are going to be like around 184 at the end of the stream at this point. And we are like... We have done like half of the main story, half of the side quests, and maybe 70% of open world. That's basically where we are. So I suspect that maybe like 250 hours we should be able to wrap up the, the base game. You know, I think that that should be, you know, that should be it. Um... Machiavelli said, I beat Adam Smasher on hardest difficulty with a dildo in one minute. Have you seen the video? No, I didn't, Machiavelli. That sounds very intriguing. Um, I actually, I remember when I was implementing the dildo and I told uh, the team uh, that I hope 
that basically after Cyberpunk release, I'll see the, the videos of like, you know, just uh, like only dildo run and then with like fight with, fight with the dildo against Adam Smasher. Um, I was hoping you guys will, uh, you know, step up to the challenge. So uh, thank you, uh, Machiavelli. Um, Im Miku asks, would you ever consider porting Cyberpunk to VR? Something like Skyrim VR, for example. Oof, my friend, I mean, I cannot talk about any future content, uh, as you can imagine. Like, I mean, me, myself, I haven't been involved in any conversations like this and so on, but I, I cannot, you know, say anything uh, more about the topic or, you know, anything uh, regarding just anything for the future. Like, I think I've seen mod or something. Wasn't there the mod, the VR mod? mod? I mean, there was definitely there is definitely a pretty awesome fucking mod for... Witcher for like first person kind of v slash VR um, but I'm not sure about cyberpunk Machiavelli says I broke that cyborg with a dildo even he was surprised <laughs> okay DJ Gnu asks was the dildo your idea yes How do you have 184 hours in the game and 50% progress in side quests and main store line? I mean, I don't know, Trippy. It's a fucking long game. <laughs> I mean, I, I, you know, I keep talking and playing, you know, so it's just like, because I'm trying to 100% the game. There's like so much stuff. And I'm also like playing slowly and very carefully. I'm also playing like, like for me to play the game, it takes a long time. I'm playing really slowly, just really getting it all in. Anyway. Let's see, let's see, the message from Wamar that we just got. Ex Kukulus wrote next run for me dildo only. <laughs> I'm glad you guys get inspired, you know, by, by silly things that I did. Um, anyway, hey amigo, it's been nice, we nailed some gigs, cracked some jokes, but we don't want things to get stale, eh? Soon as you get too cozy, the world burrows right by. Got some side shit on my own, I wanna focus on. All this being a fixer, pushing contracts, I'm done with it. Least in a sense, but hey, don't cry. Send you something to wipe away those tears. It's waiting for you in your toy stash. See ya around V. Oh, that's cool. That is actually fucking nice of you. Right, Captain Right? Okay. That's awesome. Right, Captain, right? Oh, God, it's so fucking far away. Anyway, um, right, because, uh, yes, because here we have Muammar, Muammar 10 out of 10. Oh, the Kara has three more? Where those are? Oh, I guess those are here because she's in a whole, because she's in a whole Badlands. So I guess this is, uh, what the Kara has, uh. So yeah, I mean, you can you can see basically the status uh, of my game, like, right? I'm a, a already still, like, plenty to go when it comes to the open world content um, to finish. And then we have only finished, like, the top part of the city. Um, and we, we have done, like, I think a half of side quests. But, like, the biggest side quests haven't been done yet by us. Uh, I don't think we have done the biggest side quests. And... Um, yeah, like, with the main storyline, we're, like, pfft, and, like, 30% probably. Rocker Girlfriend, have a lovely Sunday, Chumis. Have a lovely another Sunday, you too. Um, Voita says, have I seen your message? No, Voita, I didn't, actually. Sorry, man, but it's just, like, uh, there is a little flood sometimes. Dude TF2, I said, you sure it's a family-friendly stream speaking about dildos? I mean, that's not me. That I was made by one of the one of the people in the chat to speak about it. I'm fucking innocent, by the way. First goats, now dildos. Guys, literally you started. Literally you started and, and you're now saying that it's my fault. Seriously. Seriously, you two meet us have no have no um conscience. Uh, you you have no conscience, uh, my friends. Have a what the fuck's happening? It's like it sounded like some 
Sounded like some, some AV was just flying over me. Okay, chums. Um... Uh, let me go through this thing. Uh, Jesus Christ, what's happening? Uh, Jadunio! So, I will just read Jadunio's comment and uh, drive. Um, hi, hey, I really like how you guys could combine presenting actually well done diversity in cyberpunk and great representation from minorities uh, and be also very respectful, realistically presenting traditional Polish and European mythology and folklore in Witcher games and not shying away from an incredible realism that makes your world so incredibly believable. Glad to see somebody doing both so well this times. Have a great evening. Thank you so much, Jadunio, for your very mindful and kind comment, uh, my friend. I really appreciate it. As you can imagine, it's a lot of work and we pay a lot of attention to those things. Okay, no, 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 I mean... He fucking haunted me. Okay, let's go. Uh, I'm just scrolling through the chat. Nuclear deton detonation, Jadunio. Oh yeah, probably when I when I go to the mini map and back. Yeah. Uh, Beto Lenda says, "Good afternoon, brother. How it's been? Hello, my friend. Uh, it's been pretty cool." We've been talking about uh, goats, goats and dildos, um, so, you know, just a very chill cyberpunk stream. Uh, thank you for being with us. Uh, do you watch Westworld chat and Pavel Sasko? I mean, chat probably did, I didn't. Uh, still, I know that my dear Sapphire did uh, watch it. I still have it somewhere on my list. So, you know, uh, yeah, still plenty to do. <laughs> Moderators, please ban worlds, Pan and Palmer and the Queen of Highway. <laughs> no, we cannot troll Kabi like this. That would be that would be um, that would be difficult. Use left control for better driving really helped me. Left control? What left control does? I'm actually not really sure. My friend, I have no idea what left what left control does. What the heck? Hey, I'm fucking turning. Jesus Christ, these people in this city, they can't just drive for shit. Seriously, I'm so disappointed. There's a question, why the streets feel kind of empty from Holden, I'm 1977. I'm not sure actually, uh, we are at the time of the day maybe when it's a bit less, because like normally I have so many fucking cars that I can't move um, in here. It's also depending uh, Holden on um, uh, where you are in, in, uh, in what region you are, because like when you're towards the city center and so on, there's actually lots of the cars uh, all the time. When we are, when you are more towards like outside of the city and so on, those like emptier places, then it's much less. So it really depends, you know. Like I think it's also like um, uh, influenced a bit, you know, by um, time of the day and so on. Let me actually check what time we have right now. Sorry. Okay, so it's like it's like uh, six afternoon right now. I mean. Hmm. The cars are driving, it's not like mad fucking traffic, but they are, there, something is here constantly. Could be more, you're right. Like at this, uh, at this point, uh, here. Okay, uh, my dears, let's go to the, to our apartment. Uh, let's go to our apartment, I really...